Hello YouTube, this is Shirley426 and today we have the review of the Prima Bandai exclusive Robot Damashi Psycho Moon System Zaku Ver Anime. Now, uh, this unit actually had, even in the wiki, I remember seeing multiple different names of this unit, but because of like Thunderbolt, uh, in the Thunderbolt series, they named it the Red Zaku called the Psycho Zaku at some point. Um, that, which is why, I, I, I assume that is the main reason why this guy has his name changed a few more times. But now, we have an official product, and then on the box is, is now said Psycho Moose System Zaku. So, uh, that's just the way how I'm going to use it for now. Alright, so, uh, I was really surprised to see this, that Bandai decided to actually make this product. Honestly, uh, as far as I know, um, the only product other than before this was a very old, uh, very old school kit. And so, uh, other than that, I... There were no other products of this, but now we have one now. Alright, so in the day they actually took pre-orders for this guy, there were a lot of stuff that were hyped up, so you had to actually choose which one you were going to get first. Among them were like the robot, Metal Robot Damashi, the Hazel series, and then there was another SHF Kamen Rider figure, and a few more stuff. So, like, my first priority was this guy, and then was the SHF. Alright, so let's see what we got for this. So, as usual, let's go over the components. Now, technically, what you see is not everything I took out. Now, these are the stuff that I only took out. There is another um, package that actually includes this guy's, like, you know, accessories. So, uh, the figure-wise, in the box, it is a double-layered plastic blister pack. So, one blister would have the figure and all this stuff, and then the other one would actually have more stuff. So, let's see what we got. So, first of all, as usual, you actually get the mobile suit itself. I am still amazed that I was able to get this guy. Yeah, this thing actually has a lot of interesting parts and like articulation that I haven't really didn't really see in other robot Daoji figures so far. Granted, the only robot Daoji figures I have been collecting were mostly gym type units or Federation style mobile, mobile suits. So, yeah, this one is definitely different from those. All right, so let's see. Let's talk about. Let's get rid of the you know the unusual, the, like the easy one stuff first. So, number one, as usual, this guy does not have any legs. So, uh, and this guy is usually only used in space, so he use, has a lot of thruster. So, because of that aspect, they actually give you a bundle of thruster effect parts. So, and keep in mind, this isn't everything. There's actually another layer that has a few more. So, let's, let's see what we got. So, they give you these small type thruster parts. Uh, the, the, the small ones, they only give you two. So, I'm assuming these are supposed to go onto the uh, chest area. There are a few small thrusters there, or somewhere else. So, it really depends on how you use it. So that's that and then we get eight eight of these long ones like even like the most ones I've seen like maybe six or maybe five or the like the maximum amount but this give this one just gives you eight thruster effect parts so eight of these large ones as well so just give you guys an idea and then uh, once again being robot damage they actually give you an extra antenna just in case you if you break it or damage it so I am really thankful for that Alright, so we got rid of the messy one, so let's see what we else got. So, uh, so here are the stuff that are, that are included in the first blister that, is, that has the figure itself. So number one, we get these wires. So once again, not the biggest fan of wire effects, but once again, this one is kind of mandatory. So for the, being a Psycho Mozaku, basically, like the Xeon, he, this can la launch his arm and then fire a beam. So this is pretty much for that effect part. So out of the box, they will be straight up. But once again, the more you use this, I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that these will get a little bit messy in the long run. And then you get these extra hands. So currently, you might, you might be wondering what's the difference between the hands that are attached to the unit right now. So number one, this one, these hands are actually the fingers are straight. Now, even the regular hand, the fingers are each of them are have the, are connected to ball joints, the main hand. Now they don't bend in the middle, only on the attach point here. So they can, they do have a bit of a movement. Other than the some, it also moves, but very stiff. And number two is that these are the hands that you use if you want to attach the beam effect parts. You can see there are these holes where you can attach the beam effect parts. Well, while the regular hands here, they don't have the actual holes to attach those. So keep that in mind. All right, so you get both of these hands. Once again, I'll be showing you guys all the demonstrations after we go through the articulation here. And then here we have this part, which I would, this is kind of the most important part here. So this is the part where you can actually attach in the action base um, in a more, you know, better way. So what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to, you have to split up the legs like this and then you attach here. And there's, there's a few pegs here that you have to connect from the inside and then you plug this back in, which allows you to put this on an action base in this, in this, uh, 
position here. So for now, if you for now if you don't use this, you have to use this hole, which is which makes it very awkward to use. So so that's the way how you use it because as far as I know, there is no hole on the uh, on the crotch area, other than the back. So very important piece here. And then finally, we get an action base. They, they, this is actually included in the box, so it's very your standard action base. So and it's pretty stable, so very good. And here is that other blister pack. Uh, this one, this is the one that actually includes the action base. So you can see the action base here. And then we actually get more thruster effect parts. Now, just to be clear, these thruster effect parts are not the same length. These are slightly shorter than these, the large ones. So we have eight large ones. We have two small ones. That's ten already. And then they give you five more in different sizes. So. So in total, we have 15 thruster effect parts. And not only that, we have these beam effect parts. So we had two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten effect parts. Uh, but once again, I believe not all of these are in the same length. So these two, they're the two large, longest ones. So two sets of the longest one. And then these three, I believe, are all different uh, size. I believe these, uh, these guys might be the same length. So six of them are the same length. This, Two of these ones are slightly shorter than the longer one, and then we have one that's even more shorter. So uh, you pretty much get everything that you need for this guy. All right, so that was a lot of stuff. So let's see what we got for in terms of articulation here. So this guy articulation is definitely uh, very interesting. It's not what you what you would expect. So. Uh, number one, let's look at the head here. So the head definitely has that anime look, the, the old school classic stuff, box art style look, which I really like here. And if you're wondering, yes, you can actually take off the head and then now control the mono IO. So if you want to change the position, you can, but once again, it's slightly on the stiff side. So let me just try using this one actually. Oops. So you're supposed to be able to change the position here, but once again, it's mine is very, very stiff here. So. Uh, yeah, but still according to the map, it's supposed to move around here. So once again, I'm not sure why it's not moving So let me actually give this a try one more time Okay, uh, there we go. Okay, there we go So you're supposed to move the entire black piece so then you can actually move the model eye a little bit to the side So once again, well despite we have the option to move the model eye, I tend to leave mine exactly in the middle position Just to you know for my own sanity all right, so sorry about that delay. So once again, here we go. Now for the shoulders, so moving the arm might be tricky because at first when you open the box, this thing is very stiff in, in general. So number one, we get your typical 360 twist here as well. And then moving to the side is possible like that, but I think it's the head that's blocking the way as well. So uh, what a bummer, but still, yeah, you can move the arm to the side 90 degrees and then the arm does rotate 360 on its own. And then bend wise, now bend wise, it may only look like it only has 90 degrees, but that's fine because this guy can actually eject his arm and this is where you connect the wires here so to use the cycle system and then if you're wondering does it actually float now that's because now it won't because the wire isn't strong enough they actually have another extra hole here in the whole cover so this is where you put your connect your other action bases to here so technically if you want to have show full potential for this guy you're gonna need two more extra action bases for the arm so keep that in mind so yeah, you do have this option here, very well done. And then, now the arms don't pop up that, that easily, but once again, uh, make sure you don't lose it. And then the hands can also rotate 360, and once again, it's your uh, robot uh, damashi robot style hands where the ball joint is on the arm, and then the hand has the hole here. So looking at the other hands here, so you can get an idea, so you can see there's a hole there, So and the peg is on the arm. Now I do wish they would have attached this uh, part onto the other side rather than the front part. That's the only part that I found a, a little bit odd regarding this figure, or uh, on the arms to be more specific. So yeah, and then as I mentioned before, each of the fingers do are connected to ball joint, so you do have a slight movement going on here, a little bit of wiggle going on here as well. All right, so we've seen the head, and then the head. Once again, I forgot to mention the head articulation. Can you can move the side? You can go to side to side, not 360. Uh, and then the head, you can go down for some reason, but uh, upwise, uh, you should be able to go up as well because according to the manual, it does show that. But once again, I'm having slight trouble here. There we go. So the mechanism here is very odd. It feels like it doesn't. It shouldn't move up, but there is this mechanism where it allows it to go up. So a very odd articulation to here over here in general. All right, so we've seen the arms now. That's the back section for now. So here we have the back. We have multiple thrusters here, including those already on the feet area. We have eight of them, and then on the back we have 
another five. So that's already 13 thrusters going on here. Each thruster do have some movement here. This one can move side to side, no up and down, but only side to side. I mean, there is a slight wiggle that can go up, but technically I think this is supposed to move side to side. You know, these ones that are pretty much on ball joints, so through, you can move as much as it can as well. And then this one, I believe, yeah, this one is on a ball joint, but onto the side section right over here. So uh, while it does move pretty well, but keep in mind how these are connected. You don't want to snap anything off. All right, so we've seen the back here, nothing too special. There's nothing that can pop out as far as I can see. No additional backpack connecting, connection or anything as well. Now for the main chest part, we have these small thrusters here. So I think the small thrusters are mostly going to be using up here, I think. And that's that. And now for the main body articulation, here is where the things get interesting. So number one, going downwards, nothing too special. I mean, it goes down. Uh, it can go even more, a little bit more. So that's that. Now, if you want to do a nice floating pose, this is what, where it gets interesting. So you can see the body here, yeah. So you can actually extend here and then do this to make sure it's actually facing forward like that when, when it's floating around. Now, uh, to some people, this may not look good, to be honest. Uh, this may not look very well done, but once again, to get that natural pose, I think that they did a okay job, if you ask me. Now, if you want to do a little bit less, so this is, and then you extend the neck forward. Now, this is how you can get, you know, less, you know, awkward. So I think if you're taking pictures, just make sure that, you know, this part doesn't show up too often. But once again, uh, I do not own the Rowa Danwashi Ziyong, so I'm not sure if that thing also has the same style of articulation point on the body here. But once again, yeah, it's definitely interesting. And you can go 360 in this format as well. Uh, in this way, in this way, there's no way you can. So keep that in mind. All right, now for the legs here. Now, now the legs might be interesting. So at first, I was kind of confused by looking at the legs. Is this all? Am I getting? But apparently, there's more than you think. So number one, the legs. So if you want to just not move the waist, but also just want to move the legs, you can. But once right now, it feels very limited. But what you can do is that you can slightly extend like that and then you get more movement going on here so using that movement with the waist section uh depending on how you angle it you may not need to extend that you know joint that joint like this so really depends on how you want to display it so in this format the legs can go uh and when they fully extend you can go forward and backward that's pretty much it but not as much as you think and you might be wondering is that it is that really it for the legs no you can actually split each leg separately like that and you can see there's a there's a mid joint here so be careful with this one this is the joint that kind of connects uh the most legs into one so giving you that illusion that this is a single piece but no so you if you want to divide the legs into each one that is possible and once again you can extend the top section here but you can also extend the lower section like that and give it a slight bend going on here now um let me I haven't tested this one out, but let me see if you can do these together. Uh, let me just do this So let's say if you extended everything as possible and both of them are still you know You can connect them and then they can all actually actually bend together So it's really up to you, but once again, I don't think that it's really mentioned in the manual So it's really up to how you want to play this So once once you have everything ex extended and everything, you know divided you can you actually get a nice size hole going on here Although I would be careful because this piece seems to be the most easy part to make break off if you're not you know aware how everything moves off and going to the side I'm gonna say no because you see this giant side skirt. Yeah, you're not going anywhere Forward kick. Yeah, not so much because once again everything's blocking the way and then backwards also not so much So you can see the legs are slightly you know limited because of the design here But once again this guy is not supposed to, this guy is not supposed to do any kicks or anything. So that's it and let's see uh, Yeah that's it. All right, so uh, now looking at the legs or feet here. So you have these stands here. So uh, here's the stand as well So these ones can actually you can fold them downward to, to make sure that you know they don't look awkward in space or when you're making it into the floating position. Now this one, I thought this would also fold downwards, but no, this one actually folds upwards like this. Now I'm not sure if this is related to some sort of rocket science or like some sort of uh, you know aerodynamics. That was the only part that I found a little bit odd, but still, uh, I mean, good to know because um, I, I, I've done my best and it doesn't fold downwards despite how it looks like. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the articulation. So I'm actually really impressed by the overall engineering and design here. So 
Um, there's just so much way to like display this guy and then the articulation, especially on the waist, were definitely surprising for me. All right, so we've seen the basics of the, of the figure and that was a lot to show. I'll be right back with a few demonstrations. Okay, I'm back. So here is the first demonstration here. So I, I was able to connect the action base connector onto the main uh, figure and then I was able to attach as many thruster parts, <laughs> thruster effect parts as possible. Now, uh, there were some limitations. There are a few things I've noticed. So number one, uh, if you have the legs connected together with that middle piece here, then you're kind of limit, then attaching the thruster effect parts in the between one. So uh, the the four in the middle are a little bit tricky to attach because these parts are actually blocking the way. So uh, I was able to manage to attach maybe two, but once again, uh, it was a very stretch, and I didn't want to uh, want to I didn't want to damage any effect parts. But other than that, the rest on the outer size and the back, everything fits perfectly, and it just looks menacing as well. Well, not menacing, but you can definitely feel that this guy is rushing through space. And then also, I was able to use these smaller ones onto the chest area. Now. Depending on how you look at it, that may look good or bad, it really is up to you. And once again, uh, uh, there's another few more things I've, I've noticed. So number one, the beam effect part. So you technically, in total, you get uh, four different lengths. So the the two two of these guys are the same length, so there's two longest, and then there's one that's uh, slightly shorter than the longest one, and then another one, and then another one. So you get four, uh, four different lengths of beam effect parts, in total of ten, meaning that you get two of each. Uh, now make sure that uh, you, you are pointing the fingers at the right direction so that it is actually firing or it just may look a little bit messy at the same time. Now I've also noticed what, if you have the if you have the action based connecting points connected here then you're pretty much locked and then if you lock everything here uh, onto the legs then you're kind of limiting the movement or articulation of the figure itself because th what this means is that if you have this in place then you can't move the legs you cannot rotate the leg joints because everything is locked into place so keep that in mind so if you're going to uh you if you want to utilize the leg articulation a little bit more then you're going to have to uh not only connect this to the back section and not connect the middle joints onto the legs here. So I'm, I'm going to be showing you guys another example like that as well. All right, so uh, yeah, so here is the flowing example. I think there's the only thing left to show is the cycle move effect, so with the wire effect, and then the legs separated at the same time. So uh, the only thing I've, I'm not sure I forgot is that I'm not sure if this guy is able to fire beams from his mouth. Now there's there is no port or hole, or hole onto the mouth section here, so I don't think this guy can, or at least in this version of the figure. And some of you guys might be wondering, does, why does this thing doesn't have any legs? What you're thinking is about a different variant called the Bishop. So the Bishop is basically the same unit, but with actual legs and with dark green color. So that's, a, once again, a different unit at the same time. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'll be right back with the other demonstration. Okay, I'm back. So for uh, this time, I actually divided the legs, extended the joints. Uh, apparently now you could still use the joint, but then the joint will be pop, or would be around here between the crotch. So your action base would be actually pointing, connecting to the crotch area. So that might look a little bit awkward. So this time I actually just took out the the connecting point and then actually attached this action base to the back hole of the waist section. So that works perfectly. I extended the legs. And now, uh, also took got rid of got, got rid of the uh, middle piece right over here. So now it was freely to attach all the all of the thruster parts. Yes, it, I actually attached every thruster part that I could onto the figure. So currently there are eight on the legs or feet, two on the front part, and then on the back there are already five of them. So eight plus five plus uh, two that's fifteen. All fifteen thruster effect parts. So that is very cool. Now, uh, once again, uh, and now I also did the cycle move faggot part. So I attached the wire and then I used the included action base uh, as a stand here. So now, um, once again, I'm still not used to doing these poses, these type of poses here. So the wire action still looks a little bit awkward, but it looks very cool with the right position here. So I'm really, I really like this pose right now I'm currently doing. But once again, the wire just seem, does not seem a little bit 
natural. So I might need to give it an extra curve or anything. But once again, as I mentioned before, um, you, you do need an action base in order to display this properly because if not, it's going to droop down like that. So keep that in mind. So if you want to show full potential, you're going to need like two more extra action bases for this guy. Uh, the only reason why I'm not doing both hands is because of my space limitation of this new bookshelf of mine. So once again, if I actually had a more, if this was my original setup, I would have totally done uh, both of the hands right now. And that is pretty much for the review. So once again, um, it's been a long time since we actually got a product of the Saikomu system Zaku. So, and I think the robot Damashi did a really good job here. I think it's worth the price. I think it's really worth getting one if you're a big fan of this specific unit. So, uh, I'm very satisfied to the point where I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to wait for another product for this to happen. But once again, if they actually do release a Bishop, as a robot Dawashi, then that's a whole different story. But still, I'm really happy how this figure turned out. The only, only part I would be careful is that make sure that you know how the legs work and then make sure like how certain parts work because some parts can be extremely stiff but can be movable. There's another part that was mentioned in the manual is where these uh, these areas are supposed to slightly move, but once again, I've done everything and it doesn't move, so I'm not sure what's going on. But other than that, this is a really cool figure. I think you're going to have a lot of fun time if you get one as well, because there's just so many ways to play around with this. Anyway, that was pretty much it for the review. This was the review of the Premium Bandai exclusive robot Damashi Saikomu System Zaku for anime. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time